Welcome back to the FIK 3505 course in wireless access protocols. In this uh, section we were going to discuss uh, reliable wireless link transmission. This is a typical block diagram for a link protocol for transmission of packets in a wireless channel. On the left hand side we have a data source that uh, generates uh, messages that are stored in the buffer memory of the transmitter and when a message is going to be transmitted it's encoded we add checksum bits and uh, the complete packet is then transmitted over the, the wireless channel reaching the decoder at the receiver side. The decoder at the receiver side uh, checks the checksum bits and determines whether the message was uh, correctly received or not. If it's correctly received, a uh, acknowledgement message is sent back to the uh, receiver over the, in the wireless channel. And the message can be dropped uh, from the buffer memory and uh, the next message can be uh, transmitted. At the same time, uh, the message is forwarded uh, into the buffer memory of the um, receiver and uh, it's fed to the data user. If the decoder detects an erroneous message, a negative acknowledgement message is sent back over the channel, which means that the memory uh, content uh, at the transmitter side cannot be dropped. Instead, uh, we have to retransmit and re-encode the message and uh, transmit it again over the, the, the duplex channel until the decoder decides that the message is uh, correctly received. The performance measures that we will be concerned with are mainly three. Uh, we will look at the efficiency or the throughput of uh, the protocol. And the efficiency or the throughput of the protocol is uh, de defined as the time spent transmitting information symbols um, divided by the total transmission time required. We will also be interested in the probability of undetected errors, and that is the probability that an erroneous message is actually delivered to the data user. And finally, we'll be looking at the end-to-end -end delay. How long time does it take for a message to be transmitted to the uh, uh, receiving side? Let's first look at the uh, error control strategies, how to design these checksums that allows us to detect errors. To be able to detect errors, we will use a concept from Communication 3 called block codes. Let's assume that uh, we have uh, messages uh, consisting out of uh, K symbols, K information symbols. And in a block code, what we do is that we compute by means of some algebraic computation, we uh, compute a number of uh, uh, check symbols. Let's assume that these are n minus k, and together with the k information symbols, we get the total uh, length of a transmitted message of n symbols. Such a block code has uh, two types of performance uh, measures associated with it. First is the efficiency of the, of the code, and that is the, um, can be measured as the code rate or the relative code rate, and that is the um, number of information systems divided by the information symbols divided by the uh, total number of symbols. A code rate equal to 1 means that uh, uh, there will be only information symbols and as uh, we add more and more check symbols the uh, code rate gets less uh, than 1. Uh, it, it's a measure of how much uh, time we spend on information symbols compared to the total number of symbols that are sp transmitted in uh, over the channel. So of course we want uh, uh, a code rate that is uh, close to 1 to, to not lose efficiency. Uh, the other performance measure has to do with the uh, error detecting capability of, of the, um, the code and uh, that is the minimum distance and if we have two different messages uh, the smallest amount of uh, symbols that these messages will differ uh, is the minimum distance. Uh, and how this is, um, uh, can be used to detect errors uh, we will describe with the following example. To illustrate the um, 
error detection, error correction capabilities of a block code, uh, we use a vector space representation. Assume that um, uh, we uh, describe all combinations of uh, messages and, and symbols in, uh, in a word of length n uh, in a vector representation, so that's that each symbol uh, represents one coordinate in one dimension uh, in, uh, in this space. If we have a binary code, this will be a binary space, so there will be only zeros and ones on each coordinate. And, uh, and if we uh, project or flatten this uh, description, uh, we get a picture like the one here shown in the graph. Um, all the dots uh, in a binary code, uh, all the dots in the graph uh, uh, will be uh, in total 2 to the n, uh, as they are. Uh, 2 to n possible combination of zeros and ones in a word of length n. As uh, we have um, only k information symbols, there are only 2 to the k possible correct messages, and these are indicated in the graph by uh, red dots. Um, if the receiver receives uh, a word corresponding to a red dot, it will assume that this is a correctly received message, this is a bona fide uh, correct message, and it will forward it to the, um, to the receiver. If a um, blue dot is received, uh, the uh, receiver will assume that uh, this was a correct m message, but it has been corrupted by some error, so we can detect an error. Uh, the only case when the receiver makes a mistake, if there are so many errors that uh, the um, message has, has been um, corrupted to, to such an extent that it goes from one red dot to um, another uh, red dot. And um, uh, in, in the graph we can illustrate here that the minimum distance or the minimum uh, number of errors that um, that need to be uh, uh, need to occur to from to go from one correct received message to another is dimming uh, here. Then it is clear that uh, as soon as there occur less than d mean errors, uh, we will always uh, uh, be able to to detect um, uh, a message that is an error. Uh, the the d mean. Um, uh, can be computed uh, as in any vector space as the uh, difference um, between the uh, coordinate squared and if this is the d-mean squared. Uh, uh, the Hamming distance um, is uh, the number of symbols that differ and we can see if the uh, uh, a1s and a, a1 minus b1 and a2 minus b1 all are, are binary coordinates, these terms can only be zeros and one. So the for binary codes the um, uh, Hamming distance is actually the, the same thing as the Euclidean distance uh, squared. Uh, how large can uh, uh, they mean be for, for a code? Uh, well, uh, it has of course to do with the number of check symbols and uh, a very simple uh, bound on uh, how large uh, uh, they mean can be is the given by the singleton bound. It simply says that uh, the d-mean has to be less than the number of uh, check symbols n minus k plus 1. So to um, take a simple example here, let's assume that we have uh, a code with uh, n equal to 7 and uh, the number of information symbols is 4. And your task is to determine what is the um, uh, maximum number of uh, errors that such a code can be guaranteed to detect in every transmitted message. So um, please uh, pause the recording at this point to figure out the correct answer. And when you're done, uh, you can uh, continue with the correct answer. So here is the answer. Uh, according to the singleton bound, uh, with n equal to 7 and k equal to 4, uh, the maximum Hamming distance uh, will be 4. And this means that if there are four or more errors occurring, we cannot be sure that uh, an error pattern of that size uh, will not give us another correct uh, code word. 
So the answer is that uh, such a code can guarantee at most the detection of three errors. Uh, and of course, uh, this is an upper bound, so we may not even be sure that uh, there exists code that um, uh, actually can do this. But at most, three errors is what we can guarantee from, from such a code. Determining the undetected error probability is uh, not quite straightforward. Uh, the undetected error probability, that is the uh, probability that a uh, erroneous message is declared as correct by the receiver. Uh, of course, the, um, we know that uh, as long as the number of errors is less than nu, or d mine minus 1, we are guaranteed to um, uh, detect uh, errors in the message. What we cannot say, however, uh, is um, uh, what happens if the uh, number of errors is large, much larger than you. Most of those cases, um, we still be able to detect a, uh, an error, but we're no longer guaranteed to do this. So this leads us to the this upper bound that the um, probability of undetected error has to be less than 1 minus the probability that we have less than uh, or equal than to new errors uh, in our message. P uh, is the uh, probability of a single um, uh, error in the channel, and uh, the uh, probability follows from the binomial distribution. This is simply the, the uh, uh, probability that there will be um, uh, I errors in, in out of N different uh, symbols. And so the summation is simply uh, uh, sum, summing all, over all the events of having zero up to, to uh, mu errors. So this graph shows the undetected error probability for a typical block code as a function of small p, which is the bit error probability on the channel. As long as um, p is small, in particular when n times p is less than nu, or the error detection probability, then the upper bound approximation um, is, a, is a very good one. Uh, and uh, this is the situation on the left-hand side of the graph. But what happens if the um, uh, error probability on a channel becomes very high? Let's assume, for instance, that the uh, message uh, is uh, received under very strong interference or a collision with another, another message. And uh, so the um, received uh, symbols uh, are practically uh, randomly received as zeros and ones. So what is the um, probability that, that such a completely garbled message is uh, detected as a correct one? Well, all the n minus k check symbols have to be exactly the right ones, and um, the probability that uh, a random sequence of zeros and ones is exactly the right pattern is uh, uh, 2 to the minus uh, n minus k, or 2 to the minus the number of check symbols. Interestingly enough, uh, that is not the uh, maximum, uh, or the worst situation that gives the maximum undetected error probabilities. Uh, in fact, the, the maximum uh, uh, undetected error probability occurs when uh, uh, n times p, or the expected number of errors, is exactly d min. And this is shown as there's the peak of the graph here. But uh, the difference is not so uh, big, and uh, in most cases, the um, and sort of upper bound for the undetected error probability I is uh, derived by, by this reception of random messages as indicated in the formula below the graph. So we apply this knowledge in a simple quiz. Um, we um, have a link protocol and we use binary transmission of messages and uh, we want to guarantee that the maximal undetected error probability is less than 10 to the minus 5. And the question is, how many check symbols are needed if we use the our upper bound on the uh, uh, error probability? So please pause the recording at this point and then figure out the correct answer. And here is the uh, correct answer. Um, we uh, can use the upper bound uh, based on uh, completely randomly received uh, symbols. So the upper 
bound on uh, the undetected error probability is uh, 2 to the minus uh, the number of check symbols, and that has to be less than 10 to the minus 5, and uh, doing a simple logarithm calculation, we find that n minus k has to be larger than 16.6, and uh, so the answer will be that 17 check symbols are have to be added to each message to, to guarantee um, uh, undetected error probability uh, less than 10 to the minus 5, uh, even under extreme conditions. The next topics on our agenda is to see how these retransmissions are going to be arranged in practice. The simplest and most straightforward procedure for retransmissions is to stop and wait ARQ protocol. It transmits one packet at a time and it keeps transmitting that packet until it's uh, correctly received. This is illustrated in the timing diagram in this graph. On the top line we see the uh, transmitter timing and on the bottom line we see the receiver timing. In this particular example transmitter is transmitting message number one and that message is received after a propagation delay at the um, receiver. In this particular case the receiver determines that the message was an error. It sends a negative acknowledgement to the transmitter that immediately starts repeating message number one. In this case, the message is correctly received, an acknowledgement message is transmitted to the transmitter, and the transmitter will continue with message number two, and so on. Uh, analyzing the performance of uh, this uh, protocol, we first determine the expected time of transmitting a packet. Uh, and this um, consists of two components. First, we calculate the uh, uh, transmission time of a packet or uh, the transmission cycle of a packet. We um, see that uh, n divided by rc, that's the number of bits divided by the data rate, and that's the time for the actual packet transmission. And tv is the round trip time or idle time, the time we have to wait until we receive the acknowledgement. And this is multiplied by the number expected number of retransmissions. And the expected number of retransmissions, that is um, uh, determined by the acceptance probability. And the uh, a packet is accepted as correct, uh, either if it's correct or if we cannot um, detect an error. So it's uh, the uh, probability of a correct reception plus the, detect the, the probability of an undetected error. As the probability of an undetected error is very small, we can uh, uh, approximate uh, PA equal to PC. Um, and this gives us the uh, the expected um, uh, time for uh, for uh, to take takes to, to get a message correctly received at the um, uh, at the receiver. We can now compute the efficiency, and efficiency is the uh, time spent uh, for in transmitting information bits, and that is uh, since we have k information bits, that's k divided by R C. And we divide by the expected time for transmitting of a packet, which is here in the denominator. And so we, we get this, this final results. And we can simplify it um, to get uh, th on this form. We can see that um, uh, k divided by n we recognize as the, as the code rate of the, um, uh, of the um, uh, error detecting code. Although the uh, stop and wait protocol is easy to implement and simple, uh, it has a main drawback, and that is, of course, that the idle time, uh, the round trip time, is not utilized. Uh, the protocol remains idle until an acknowledgement is received. A simple modification of the stop and wait protocol is to go back and ARQ protocol. And what we simply do is that we keep transmitting uh, before receiving uh, any acts or NACs. Uh, for instance, in this, this example, the transmitter starts transmitting message 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and uh, by the time it has received um, uh, a negative acknowledgement uh, regarding message number 3, it simply backs up in its buffer memory and, and starts transmitting messages starting with uh, uh, message uh, number 3, and, and then keeps transmitting 5, 6, 7, 8. 
and the performance um, is uh, in terms of efficiency is found in the equation at the bottom. Clearly we can see that the round trip time uh, does not appear uh, at all in the, um, in the efficiency uh, measure. The um, uh, key advantage of this protocol is that it doesn't have to rearrange uh, any order of transmission. The buffer can be a, a, a simple first in, first out uh, memory, so um, we don't have to reorder any, any um, uh, packets in, in, in the buffer. The drawback is, of course, that we have to retransmit messages that already have been correctly received, or that turn out that they have already been correctly received. The remedy to this situation and to get an even more efficient protocol is, is to use the selective repeat ARQ. In this protocol, which is similar to the go back N uh, protocol, but here we only retransmit those uh, messages that were found in error, and then we continue with uh, transmitting uh, according to the, the order of transmission. Uh, in this case, uh, the drawback is that we have to reorder the uh, the packets uh, before handing them over to the uh, data user. The efficiency of this protocol is uh, found at the bottom. So here are the correct answers. The stop and wait protocol transmits one packet at a time, that is true. In the selective repeat protocol, the order of packets is not maintained. Uh, the selective repeat protocol has a throughput that is independent of the round trip delay, that is also true. And the go back end protocol maintains the order of packets, uh, but may require that already some correctly received packets have to be retransmitted, and that is also true. So what does the uh, efficiency of the ARQ schemes we described look like as function of the channel bit error probability P? But they roughly have this behavior as in the graph. Um, for very low channel error probabilities, when there are no channel errors at all, then um, basically the only efficiency loss is that we add the check symbol. So the efficiency uh, will be k divided by n uh, at the, as, as we cross the, um, the, the vertical axis at p equal to 0. Then basically the efficiency will um, be about the same. There are very few errors, very few retransmissions, so the um, uh, efficiency stays flat. But then uh, at some point when the um, channel errors start increasing, the um, uh, efficiency drops as we have to do more and more retransmissions. And uh, the uh, knee point for all of these um, uh, ARQ schemes lie around um, uh, the point where n times p is equal to 1. n times p is the expected number of uh, uh, channel errors in a message. And when the, there are typically more than one error in, um, uh, in a message, then uh, we have to do retransmissions. And eventually, we have to do excessive retransmissions that the probability of finding no errors in the message goes to zero, and also the efficiency then goes to zero. So uh, an interesting question is to do what to do when we end up in this bad regime when NP is uh, larger than one. To improve the performance in, um, for really bad channel conditions, we can use a concatenated or combined schemes where we uh, combine repetition and forward error correction. This can be done as in the uh, shown in the uh, in the diagram. We um, take our data and use our regular ARQ scheme. We add some check symbols for error detection, but then we add additional check symbols uh, for uh, error correction. And the whole package is transmitted over the channel and there we first decode the um, uh, correction uh, decoder and try to correct as many errors as possible. And then we use the ARQ scheme to detect if there are any remaining uh, errors. And uh, if there are remaining errors, we have to retransmit and, and repeat the same procedure. If there are no remaining errors can be detected, then the data is output to the user.
So here we show the performance of uh, a concatenated scheme as compared to the error detection only scheme. For very low uh, channel bit error probabilities, uh, as there are no errors, the only thing happens is that we sacrifice some deficiency since we add more checksum bits, but there are no errors to correct. But on the other hand, if the channel bit error probability gets high, the knee point uh, of the efficiency curve moves to the, to the right. So instead of occurring at uh, NP equal to 1, uh, the typical number of er errors in the message is 1, it can move to, say, uh, NP equal to 5 if the code is able to correct, uh, the inner code is able to correct 5 errors. The main drawback with the straightforward concatenated schemes is uh, that we do not know the channel conditions. We do not know uh, how many bit errors we will occur. And in particular when the um, uh, channel conditions are good and uh, there are few errors, we waste a lot of redundancy uh, in uh, providing error correction when there are no errors to correct. One uh, way to deal with this is to use a concept called uh, hybrid or incremental ARQ or type 2 ARQ. The idea here is that uh, we take our information uh, message I and we compute uh, as, as usually a checksum, here we call it C1, and that, that we transmit. If the um, uh, receiver is now able to um, decode the message as correct, uh, we, we're done. Um, if uh, an error is detected, uh, we uh, at the transmitter side um, uh, compute another checksum C2 and transmit only that. We do not retransmit the whole message with the additional checksum, but only the checksum C2. And uh, if uh, the receiver uh, now has access to I, C1, and C2 and still cannot decode correctly, uh, we compute a third checksum C3, which is um, uh, transmitted uh, over, over the channel. Uh, so the idea here is that uh, instead of uh, retransmitting uh, the whole message, uh, we only transmit the, the black items, I, C1, C2, and C3, which of course uh, requires a uh, lo lot fewer bits to be, be transmitted, uh, transmitted. And we keep on adding checksum until uh, the sufficient number of checksum bits have been uh, received to decode the message. And how many checksum um, bits are needed depends, of course, on the number of errors that will occur. Um, and in fact, there are a set, such sets of codes, so-called MDS, or maximum distance separable codes, that have the, exactly this property, that they, they can uh, decode the message as soon as uh, K correct uh, symbols have been received. So as, as soon as uh, uh, any k of these um, message, uh, message symbols are correctly received, the, the, uh, the decoder is able to determine the uh, original message. Finally, we have a look at what happens if the channel conditions are varying, and this is a typical situation that occurs in, in mobile communications. Here, uh, it's illustrated in the graph where the signal quality varies over time, and uh, the, um, as the, the mobile terminals move, uh, they're exposed to varying degree of uh, shadowing or multipath uh, propagation that causes these uh, strong signal uh, quality variations. So if we now want to transmit our packets uh, over channel, uh, as illustrated here, um, uh, it will be um, subject to um, uh, a very different uh, error pattern. The, pa the errors will are likely to occur in bursts like this, and when the uh, corresponding to the fading dips of the um, of the received signal. So instead of uh, being uniformly distributed over, over all the, the bits, they occur in, in, in long bursts. So there are basically two strategies to, um, to deal with this. Uh, and strategy one is to use short packets so that we can exploit those uh, uh, rather lengthy times when the channel is good. And when the packet is hit by a burst, uh, we have to retransmit it anyway. So. Um, uh, short packets with uh, no forward error correction is uh, is one one strategy it can use. The other 
uh, strategies, of course, use very, very long packets uh, such that we can use forward error correction and uh, th so the forward error correction can can uh, correct all the errors that, that occur. But as the, um, the uh, packets uh, are subject to errors in long bursts, uh, the, the codes have to be very, very long. One technique to um, achieve um, uh, very long codes without increasing the um, complexity is to use um, interleaving. Uh, and this is, can be explained in the following way. Uh, let's assume that we have uh, uh, L um, uh, encoded messages and we put them in a matrix uh, like this, row by row. So message one corresponds to the bits in, in the first row and message two corresponds to the um, uh, message in, in, the, in the second row and, and so on. And uh, we repeat this for L messages. And then, instead of transmitting them message by message, we now uh, empty this, um, this matrix uh, 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 on, the, on the vertical. So we transmit uh, columns instead. And of course, the effect is that when we um, experience uh, errors, uh, like this or, or like this, uh, we see that um, uh, the bursts will affect the columns and uh, in this case um, the um, uh, number of errors per message at the receiver side will be uh, very few. So uh, what we do is that we, by using this interleaving technique, is that we, um, uh, um, that we um, take uh, a bursty error and convert this to a more uniformly distributed uh, uh, error uh, pattern. And um, uh, this more uniformly distributed error pattern with a few errors per message can then be dealt with uh, with uh, error correcting codes. And of course for this to work, the um, um, interleaving, interleaving depth, how many messages uh, do we have to, to stack on top of each other uh, is determined by the typical burst length. Uh, if the burst length is um, uh, smaller than the interleaving depth L, uh, typically, then there will be only one error per message. So l let's uh, apply this in, uh, in uh, the following quiz. Uh, we have a code that can correct uh, one error in every code word, and um, we are transmitting data at 900 megahertz from a mobile terminal that moves at about 70 kilometers per hour and uses a data rate of 10 kilobits per second. And your task is to estimate uh, what is the minimum interleaving depth that is required to uh, give the coding scheme a chance to work properly. As usually, pause the recording and um, uh, figure out the correct answer. So here's the uh, correct answer. Um, fading dips in a, um, a mobile communication scenario, they occur about at every half wavelength uh, of, of the uh, transmitted signal. And um, we can compute the typical duration of an error burst by uh, knowing how long it takes to, to traverse uh, half a, a wavelength. And uh, the wavelength at 900 megahertz is about uh, 15 centimeters and driving at uh, about 20 meters per second. Um, this gives us a typical uh, duration of fading dips uh, in the order of 7.5 millisecond. And 7.5 um, milliseconds at 10 kilobits per second, that corresponds to 75 bits. So if we um, take an interleaving depth that is considerably larger than uh, 75 um, uh, uh, bits, then uh, we will uh, convert the burstiness of the channel uh, into more randomly distributed um, uh, errors. Summarizing, we have studied uh, link protocols for wireless channels and we have identified three important performance measures. The throughput efficiency, that was the time spent on useful transmissions or payload transmissions divided by the total transmission time. 
We have looked at the residual message error probability or error rate, and we have looked at uh, the delay, the time it takes from end to end from transmitted to receiver to, to get a correct message through. Um, we have shown that um, a low residual error can be traded for increased delay. Uh, we've seen that um, we can do um, uh, mixtures of ARQ and FEC, in particular in uh, channels with very high error rates where traditional ARQ becomes inefficient. Uh, unfortunately, the um, performance depends on the uh, actual channel conditions or the channel error rate. And uh, we have seen that uh, incremental redundancy or hybrid ARQ HARC uh, can provide this adaption in a very efficient way. Uh, in fading channels, we've seen that um, the proper adaption of um, the uh, packet size to the uh, fading structure can also provide large benefits.